the happy. This is Neil Hamburger. Burger. And you're listening to the latest, hottest mixtape by the legendary B. Dolan. 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 I'm told it's called House of Bees, Volume 3. However, I'm not sure. I can't confirm that. What is the cover of the tape box, you fucking pig? Look at it yourself. Self. 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 Cascadia Hockey. Today's intro music brought to you by B. Dolan, Natural Born Trouble. Off the House of Bees, Volume 3 from Strange Famous Records. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on, come on. Dude, that that song fucking bangs, dude. I love it. It's awesome. We'll play the last half of it on the <laughs> outro, and it, it's it's amazing. Fuck yeah. Love those Very guys. Nice. Welcome to Cascadia Hockey. I am your host with the least, Chest Rockwell. Welcome, oh, Chest. Yeah. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> Good to see you, Chesty. Thought you'd, thought you'd like that one. <laughs> My name is Corey Gaston, and we are here to talk about hockey. With us, uh, as usual, is our crew of hockey miscreants. Yes. With our newest addition. I'm really excited. Well, she Aww. was here last week, but we've decided we needed more she's, estrogen she's, in the show. So. Yeah. I have the pretty voice. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah. Anya Piper. Hey. At the end of the table, the regular man, number 86. hi oh, hey oh, Derek Schoenrock. Hey. like that hat you're wearing today. Fuck you. Yeah, thanks, and man. Fuck him. Fuck you, Shorzy. Fuck his kid. Fuck you, Shorzy. <laughs> it's a beautiful hat. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's actually really ugly. <laughs> oh. hi oh. Where were we? Damn, where Three minutes in, just out of the gate. Words. Yeah, we're coming out of the booth hot right now. That's, you're like Shorzy and warm ups. Well, there, <laughs> there is a specific reason I'm wearing the hat of your three most hated team. The three of you's most hated team. Well, that's not my most hated team. It's not necessarily Pittsburgh. hockey related, but I'll uh, I'll bring it up later as time cool. allows. All right, all right. Cool. <laughs> Behind the boards, uh, mastermind of all this madness, founder of Buried Puck Threads, misanthrope extraordinaire. Yes. One Mr. Aaron Piper. Hashtag 69, me boys. 69, <laughs> me boys. And once you guys get caught up on uh, Letter Kenny, you'll understand. So, Pitter patter, let's get out. I know, I'm all about it, dude. <laughs> I, I won't say much. The wife and I, it's go, it's so let's say the 15th, it dropped yesterday, the 14th, and we knocked out the season like back to back to back to back to back. That is God fantastic. Damn, dude. It was so good. That's a good day. It was awesome. It was good. Shorzy is all he's cracked up to be. In real life, yeah, yeah, he's awesome. Is it? W- did you ever find out? Is it Jared Kiso? It, is. You it has know it to is. be. Yeah, and you yeah. can tell from because once again, he has that the dark yeah. visor on yeah. the whole time. But holy fuck, let me just say, Jared Kiso can fucking play hockey. Oh yeah, dude. I mean, I know that that's his background. Yeah. I heard him in an interview once where you know they're like, so you talk about uh, jocks, skids, and hicks. He's like, which one were you growing up? He's like, oh, all I was three. A jock. No, yeah. he's like, oh, I was a jock. He's okay. I was the hockey player, and damn. I mean, on the ice, he looked really good. Yeah. So, uh, I, I wondered how long it would take him to write it in, to put himself on the ice. Yeah, yeah. I don't just to be able to. Muck what was it about with season it. four when Shorzy first started showing up? No, oh, Shorzy's been around since uh, they were they were making references and stuff, but oh, that's you didn't true. really see him once he started taking a shit in the bathroom <laughs> yeah. and calling him out. Well, yeah. and then we got close to it. I don't know if it was last season or the one before, but at the gym when he's 
his back to everybody yeah. doing the workout. Yeah. Um, but yeah, now you see him except for <laughs> except for the eyes up. So. Oh man. Well, the the, in the the first time you meet him, he's doing that handstand, taking a piss. upside down. Yes. 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 <laughs> Completely <laughs> butt ass naked. Dude, it was so good though. Everybody was back. Everybody came back for this season at one point or the other, and. Oh my God! I'll just say the talk show is awesome, or the radio call-in show. Is yeah, awesome. that's. I'm excited for that part. <laughs> like I, 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 that angle was such a smart idea. Yes. So. So um, the biggest burning question I had coming off of season six was, and not the cliffhanger. Yeah. Oh, and they leave you with another good cliffhanger uh, in this one. Bastards. Just so you know, a great one. A great how, one. how are the McMurrays doing? Uh oh okay so let me back Cause, one cause step I up. Because I kind of felt like their relationship sh- was falling apart towards the end of <laughs> season five. Bonnie never season shows six. up in this one. Yeah. Really, yeah. Bonnie's missing. Bonnie is missing in action. Huh? Wait, who's the wife? No, that, that Bonnie's. No, Bonnie's another Bonnie's hot the sister. One. Bonnie's the sister. Oh, Bonnie, yeah. Bonnie's there. Mrs. Um, McMurray. Huh? Yeah, Mrs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're the. W- never mind. That was off air. We won't bring that on. So. <laughs> oh. What did you say about Tannis before we started recording? I said I would fuck her. There you go. <laughs> she's so, hot. Tannis but that's okay. So wrong. Mrs. McMurray doesn't come back, but she's talked about a lot. Okay. And, and not in a negative way. She, so she down in Minican? Maybe. <laughs> maybe so. Oh, God. Oh, man. I'm that's bad images. 5.15? <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Anyway, you guys got to watch it this week because I want to talk about it so bad. Solid. Um, I'm sure by the weekend I'll have it. You, you want, up. I can just bring up Hulu right now. We can watch episode one. <laughs> yeah, we just sit here and comment on... <laughs> yeah. All I have to say is next week there will be a lot of Letter Kenny sound bites involved in the show. Hell so, yeah. Um, but it was good. Check it out if you haven't. We got a, a shit ton to talk about. We do. Around the boards, man. We're in it. We're totally in it. Uh, we said that last week, but even more so now. I mean, there's no place that you're not seeing hockey anymore. Um, I want to start, though. I want to get the I want to get the business out of the way real quick. Cause, well, it's not even business. It's just asshole people. It's business time. Yeah. Um, and this comes up every now and then. We hear about it every, every year, uh, one place or another. But it just keeps getting more emboldened, in my opinion. And for all of you that think that racism is not dead, <laughs> pull your head out of your ass, man. Um, I don't know. I'm a, an, an entitled white guy, so I don't deal with it a whole lot. Um, I do have a black son, but according to him, he doesn't get to deal with it a whole lot either, which is funny because he's in La Grande, Oregon. Um <laughs> I would think there'd be a lot of those types. But he's on college. There's That's a lot true. of That's black true. players he's, he's, on the team. And he's protected on the college campus here. But anyway, a couple of big things have come out recently. Um, I was scrolling through Twitter the other day, and a buddy of mine, he, he shared something, and he was just talking about racism. And, and sometimes when I see things, I'm just, I kind of scroll past it because you hear about it a lot. But this one caught my eye. Um, and I'll set the story up, and then Derek actually has the content of this. It was a a player, I believe it's I believe it's somewhere in Ontario, uh, a youth hockey league. One of the coaches there is is Muslim, um, and coaches uh, I think it's eight U ten U I forget. Um, anyway, coaches kids, and he got a text from one of the kids' dad, and he shared it. And Derek, you got that pulled up over there. You got the transcript of that. Yeah. So the, the and this is word for word, and it's it's hard it's to read. It's dude. like it's hard to read. But so this was the message from the player's father, Chase or Chad, I believe. His was. name is Chase. Okay. Yep. Um, and and he sent it. I can't tell if it's a text message or like Facebook Messenger, right. but um, it says, "Hi, I just wanted to express." how I feel about you as my son's hockey coach. I'm not racist or anything. (laughs) There's the first train wreck. Thank you, Corey. Stop right there. I'm not racist or anything, but I don't feel comfortable with you teaching him and the influence you will have on him. It's hockey, right? It makes more sense if it's not some Muslim guy teaching it. If it was cricket or something, that would be different, but it's not. I don't want to make this into an issue and really hope you would consider resigning and not coaching hockey. It goes against tradition, and I'm sure there are others who feel the same way. 
I really don't want to pull my son from the team either, but would have to think about that if you're the coach. What a piece of shit. I can't even imagine that someone would have the stones to fucking send a message like that. It gets my blood boiling, and I've, I've, I've read it probably a dozen times. The Anytime you preface something with, I'm not blank, but. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes, you are. You are. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you are. That'd be like, like me saying, I'm not white, but no, no, you are, and you're entitled white, and I'm sure this guy is probably, nah, fuck it, I'm not going to stereotype because that's what he's doing, but it's just, we've all met people like that. The, the worst part of this whole thing to me is the kid. <sighs> yeah. This uh, guy's already yeah. gone. This guy is a fucking douchebag. Oh, yeah. It's sad to me that without proper influence like culture and maybe somebody not the same color or religion as him teaching him things, right. he's going to grow up and be exactly like this. Yep. And this, and one of the things we've always done on this podcast is we haven't brought religion and politics into things. We don't do that. And that's not what this is about. This is about being a good fucking human being, man. And I think we can all agree across the board that racism is unacceptable. Period. I don't on care any what you level. Say. We hashtag everything that we post with hockey is for everyone because I totally believe that. We were at a game Friday night and sitting close to us, there was a group, probably total, there was probably like 20 people. And part of that was a, a, a black dad, white mom with like their four kids. And, it was the, and the four kids. kids were the best kids I've ever fucking seen at a hockey game. They're dude. like three years old. They sat, yeah. they watched, they listened, they enjoyed. And I'm thinking, why don't we see more of that? I see the Vegas Golden Knights are now doing like Hispanic Heritage Month for for all that sort oh, of stuff. Oh, they're doing the whole month. I think they're doing the whole month, if That's I remember. Rad. Um, Minor League Baseball ran a season-long lead uh, league-wide uh, Hispanic yep. heritage where they actually ha had special nights for every team yep. throughout the season where they um, supported the culture and heritage of where the teams were from. They changed uniforms, the team names. Dust Devils did that, that like three or four nights, Yeah, I think there was they? four games yeah. that they did it. And, and last year, they did like a pilot program with like eight teams did it, and this year it was... All of minor league baseball, yep. and it's just so fantastic. Cool. That is awesome, and 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 I love that man. I've seen the picture of the guy, uh, the coach himself, and I think there was a reporter up there that that got in touch with him for the uh, for the story. Mm -hmm. And the way he handled it was very classy. Um, do you have his response in that thing I, you read, I or at do. least the start I to do, it? Right, just the first caption. So he says. Um, it's kind of split in two. It says, you know something? I'm disappointed, and don't ever say I'm not racist, but dot, dot, dot. Um, Thank you. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. then follow it with clear-cut racist and xenophobic nonsense. Jesus Christ, I, I think that was pointed. Yeah. <laughs> um, and would make sense if it was cricket? Question mark. He's asking him. It would yeah. make sense if it was cricket? Like, what's the matter with you? And then... And, and then saying you don't want to make an issue, but go ahead and do just that. Want to be rude to me? Fine, go for it. I'm used to it. But for the love of God, and at least think about Riley and what kind of mindset and mentality you're putting. So I hadn't read this yeah. before I made my comment, but he hit it home. Yeah. Um, Riley's the son. Sorry, right. I didn't mention the kid's name before, but now that counts out of the bag, I guess. But um, <laughs> And at least think about Riley and what kind of mindset and mentality you're putting in his head. No, I'm not going to resign, and you really should make peace with it because you're being absolutely ridiculous, bud. Riley's a good kid, and he's talented. You're going to make his life very difficult through everything it seems you're teaching him. Hmm. Don't be daft, and don't come at me with this rubbish, mate. Please think hard about what you just said, and never talk to me about this again for both of our sakes. And there was more. T I mean, that, that I'm was, sure it went on. Yeah, it this did. Is it's got national, <laughs> international attention and all that. But I what. The other part that just hit me from what you read was, I deal with this all the time. Yeah, no, he does. That's what he's saying. Like, you could bring it to me, fine. I'm used to it, which means he's he gets it from every direction yeah. every day, which is something, honestly, I can't I, I can't put myself there because, again, we, I grew woman. up, you know, yeah. lower middle class, upper poor, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, and But I was still white, and, you know, I... I got one pair of nice tennis shoes every year, and I always had a coat to wear. Yep. Um, so I can't. I don't know. I've never, I've never felt that, 
but I have zero fucking tolerance for it. I have zero as well. I grew up in Virginia, so that that tells yeah, you a lot right yeah. there. I've literally chased the Klan around in the backwoods <laughs> That's of Virginia insane. Beach. Seriously, I mean, I had a buddy buddy with me who was part Indian, and the first night we rolled up on he's like, Pipes, we gotta go, man. They're gonna kill me. I'm part Indian. <laughs> oh, Jesus. That's, yeah, it was for real, but I mean, uh, it's it's a bunch of it's a bunch of good old boy teenagers at that point that were trying to keep it alive. But, I, I hate mean, that term, good old boys. We uh, got we got jumped at a skate park in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho for listening to No Effects. I remember you telling me about that, yeah. because Jeez. white supremacy is alive yeah. and Dude, well we were just in skating Idaho, in the skate man. park, and uh, we, had, we had my buddy's Pinto backed up mm-hmm. with the hatchback open, listening to No Effects and Don't Call Me White came on and we were skating around listening to it and these fucking skinheads came up and started fucking with us oh and it God. got real. Yeah. Like it got real. And yeah. yeah fuck all of that, dude. The hatred <clears throat> I just don't doesn't have get a it. place in, in this world and it and because the sport and this culture is so important to me. I, I will defend it tooth and nail, man, because it does not have a place at all. You know, when we got my son, my oldest who's black, when we got him involved with hockey, it didn't last long because he couldn't skate worth shit. <laughs> and he gave up on it, for real. But when I got him involved, I didn't even think about the fact that he was a black kid playing hockey until you, know, you get to the arena and you're like, oh, shit. He's like the only one out there. Mm-hmm. You know, I never thought about it that and, way. And and inherently, I mean, the reason that that hockey is such a white dominated sport is just kind of because of of where it's come from. Well, and it, no, 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 no. Listen, not not where it started. No, no, no. That's no where it's come from. But also, hear me out here. Also, because of in the last, I would say twenty twenty five years, the cost. What the hell is that? Oh shit! Ring, like a, ring, we're ring, all dying. Ring. Is that an Amber Alert? <laughs> it's snow, and I'm not going to answer. Aww. Aww. You can Aww. answer. It. She fucking hates when I do. I know, that. and you've done it before. I know. But the cost of it is for the upper middle class, lower upper class people, sort of thing. I mean, it's fucking expensive to play hockey. That is true. <laughs> and that's kind of weeded out. Okay, that's where I was going. Right, right. Now you look at people, um, Wayne Simmons. Uh, I think PK's family, if I remember right, uh, Kevin Weeks, uh, who was a black goalie uh, in the league, he's now in the NHL network. These guys kind of all grew up in the same area of Peterborough, Ontario. Super talented players. They're from Dicktown. They're from Dicktown. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> that's another one. That's, that's completely off topic. But, but it, so I mean, they stuck together. They made it through. But like Wayne Simmons has put together uh, a ball hockey tournament every year now. Yeah. That the whole point of it is to give money and equipment to kids who want to play but can't afford to play. Right. And that that is why you see a lot of white privilege in the game. Well, it, it's it's okay. So it's I, I to put it out there, it's it's the same with all winter sports. Oh sure. It's because a, it they're requi- all expensive. Yeah, it requires a lot of equipment. Right. There's not a whole lot of people of color that are professional skiers, right. snowboarders, right. shit costs money. Yep. You know, yep. whereas you can go out and learn how to play basketball with a ball. You yeah. can you can go out and learn how to play um, soccer yep. with just a ball. That's why those sports are the biggest sports in the world is yep. because they're low income sports. Yep. It's a testament to society. Yeah. I mean, it really is. And I'm not going to get into the whole, you know, inequality and, and all that stuff. That's a whole nother conversation. You know what? Bottom line with all this is, oh, and then the other part, I'll get to the bottom line. I'm like, what's his name? Brad Pitt in Ocean's Eleven where he's talking to Matt Damon. He's like, and under no circumstance do you ever want, and then he just walks away from the conversation. <laughs> um, but no, the last night, what really hit me as... You, you know what the best thing about cliffhangers is? <laughs> Dick. Last, uh, what what really got me that this is just ongoing was last night. Um, our boy Kwame, uh, Soul on Ice uh, producer, posted that he's playing NHL 20, and some player's name popped up as Lynch All Black Players. You know, it's just like what the fuck the, and and that's I guarantee you, whoever did that would not have the balls to act like that in public. No way. You're sitting behind this whole. Well, I can put a screen on and nobody will know who I am, sort of thing. But it's just. The digital balls, I guess, of people. The digital nerve. It's not even balls. The digital nerve of people. Well, to yeah, just not dude. give a shit. And that, and that's again, that's a different podcast. But that's that's yeah. social media in general. Is you can um, 
Dude, you can so, say whatever you want with literally no consequences because there's nobody there to, you know, put you in check, right? Yep. Um, there's uh, on a hey. on a podcast or um. He held it upside down. Are we you, in distress? <laughs> that would have been be- yeah. That would have been even better. We are in distress. <laughs> um. There was another uh, deal. Uh, of course, a lot of this happens on Twitter because that's one oh, of yeah. the most popular platforms. But um, someone had taken over administration of a, a horror-based page. Yep. That and on National Coming Out Day, they came out as bisexual and gay, and the hate just started rolling to the point where this person's now shutting down that page wow. for a while because they just can't can't do that. And and so I. Uh, posted on the behalf of Garagerama and and offered the the support from our our cast members that yeah. there's no no tolerance for that. Somebody hacked the uh, the Humboldt Broncos uh, Twitter earlier this oh, year yeah. and posted porn and racist bigotry and all that stuff. Don't bring fucking porn into yeah. this, you pieces of shit. <laughs> Listen here. I can't wait till you guys watch episode four. Oh my god! God um, damn it! I can. You wait. leave porn alone. Well, unless it was racist porn, right? Okay, but it's just so I'm it's... pro interracial porn. <laughs> Listen, yeah, interracial <laughs> porn is different than racist porn. Yeah, what is so? I don't think I've ever like, seen racist. What porn. if there's a? I'm just gonna get myself in trouble yeah, if are. I continue. Actually, so. I started thinking about yeah. some stuff. Like, I, okay, I'm not gonna yeah, say no, not. I'm not gonna, not not gonna a, talk about it. We okay, can save that for off the air. I want to. I want to. I want to cut to brass tacks here. Okay. Okay. Let's get down to the crux of the matter. Okay. If you yeah. listening to this podcast yeah. right now, yeah. harbor hate towards someone, yes. simply for their differences, yes. and not because they like the Blackhawks, yes. shut the fucking <laughs> podcast off yes. and walk away. We don't want <laughs> you. We don't need you. Hockey is for everyone but you. You hate-filled fucks. Yes, and you just saved yourself probably a good 40 minutes of your life, so you're welcome. We actually gave you something on the way out the door. So, there you go. Um, yeah, don't do it. Just don't do it. It's ridiculous. Now, let's go to something fun. I heard from Kwame this week, okay, and yeah. we're going to continue the Soul on Ice stuff. So, Hell yeah. So um, there will be uh, hoodies back in stock soon, and, and we'll see where, where that goes. So. Oh, yeah. Um, Do we want a heart, a quick heartwarming story yes, after all please. that doom and gloom? God damn! <laughs> so, um, and you've been awfully quiet over there, Mrs. Piper. Yeah. No, when it comes to that kind of conversation, I just think it's fucking bullshit. <laughs> she I had nothing to say. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, okay. I just don't have nothing to say. I just I think it's stupid. I want to let everybody, and this is real quick, and we will move on. I promise. But coming from where you've come from in the past, um, she's been. It's kind of funny to say this, but she was kind of the victim of racism uh, oh, yeah. when she was dating my son's sperm donor. Sperm donor she called white bitch all the time. Blorda. Why are you stealing our men? And, all. Sure. and I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not condoning it on either side. That's that's the thing about it. But I mean, it's you've got an interesting take on it. So, but I think it gets your blood boiling. I don't have a lot to say because I will one. I'm not very good with words, <laughs> so I will say something that I don't mean or blah, 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 but um, it just, it really pisses me off to the point where I have nothing to say. Yeah. I just think it's fucking bullshit. There's been a lot in this life that I've changed my opinions on. Racism's not been one of them. No. I yeah, know. so I, I, I know exactly. So I have a cousin who raised two half-white, half-African-American uh, National Football League players oh wow and she dealt with a lot of the same thing i mean you know, she i just never i never i don't feel like i <clears throat> dealt with it because i mean i mean i'm a teenager 16 years old dating a black guy thinking whatever i mean <laughs> you guys are stupid just jealous because i got the football player right you know whatever but i just it's horrible yeah and then i think about like my son i mean his girlfriend that is like i would say 50 percent gonna marry <laughs> Mm, I think um, we're probably more in the 70s. Probably. <laughs> but um, she's white. She's your blonde hair. She's blonde hair, blue eyed. She's beautiful. And, she's and they will have some pretty babies. <laughs> but it's like, I don't, I always tell Ryan, I'm like, be prepared. You know? Yeah. Like, and She's he, at Boise State. And when he goes to visit her, I just tell him, be careful, son. Yep. Yeah. We've heard I a said, lot of things. I about said, Boise. you might not feel it, but I guarantee you, just about every place you guys go together, the eyes are going to be on you. Sure. Yeah. And not in a good way. Yeah, so. that sucks. I hate it. It's weird raising my boys. Two different. I have three boys. I have you know two are white, one who's mixed, and just having to teach them different things. When he's driving, yeah, 
all the steps. This is what you got to do, Ryan. You got to put your hands on the wheel. You say, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, officer. And then, but my, my white boys, I don't have to say shit to them no, about it's, it. It's, it's just, a sad narrative. It it, really okay, is. I'm done. We got to move on. Yes. It's sent me off. <laughs> Today is the 30th anniversary of Wayne Gretzky yes. surpassing Gordie Howe. Congrats, great one. Fuck nice. that guy. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, I was going to say, feel good story? from the department of a man I want to hate so bad, <laughs> and every day there's another story of why I can't hate him, Sidney Crosby files oh, yep. <laughs> yep. Um, so he has been um, supporting a charity of his called Crosby's Little Penguins Learn to Play program oh yeah um, since 2008. That's it's good. even a fucking cute name, it's you son yeah. of a bitch. Yeah, yeah Little Lebowski's thing. Urban Achievers, Fuck. basically. God. Um, it, it's outfitted over 12,000 kids aged four to nine and kids in the, um, with full hockey equipment. Um, and there's a, there was a girls team, an all girls team That's that went awesome. through his program, Man. 17 of them. And Dope. they finally made it to a game a Penguins game to watch him play, and they Sweet. held up a huge sign in the crowd. Mm. Um, they all had little jerseys on and stuff, and um, 17 of the girls that were on the rosters that learned to play through his program, uh, they the coach, the woman coach, Sherry Hudspeth, brought, uh, tricked the team thinking they were going somewhere else, and they showed up at the arena and got to see Sydney play, and they, they had a big sign for him and stuff, and his quote was, I think it's really cool. Um, that's what it's all about. It doesn't always work out that way, but the fact that they made a team and are all continuing to play is great. My sister Taylor grew up playing hockey, and sometimes growing up we had girls on our team. The fact that there's enough girls to make a full team tells you that girls hockey is doing really good. Yes. It's great to see. So. I am so glad. You Fuck you, Sidney Crosby. <laughs> I, I'm so glad you brought this up because the NWHL has started up their season. Yep. Um, and I actually brought up uh, Twitch. The, the games over this weekend. Uh, Boston beat uh, the Mets Kay. four to two. Okay. Uh, and then on Sunday, the Mets lost to Minnesota mm. nine to two. Minnesota, dude, they're fucking good. La they're, first year in the league last year, and they won it all. Yep. Uh, and then also on Sunday, Boston over Buffalo four to two. Which uh, a former Tri City American uh, plays for or did play for Buffalo. See, okay. Uh, Shannon uh, Zabados yeah. was with the Buffalo Buttes for a oh, while. Oh, okay. Um, but we got to... So Dan's going to be on next week. I'm yeah. actually... Well, I'll, I'll pre-record that, but then Dan's going to be on and talk about the state of hockey because if I understand right, a lot of those players aren't playing this year. Yeah. Because of, of boycotting for more, right. for, for better right. you know, compensation and stuff. So. so as we sit right now, Boston is in first place uh, with three wins. Um Minnesota's in second place. They've won their first game, okay. but that's all they've played. Yeah, point um, wise. Yeah, Buffalo has one win and two losses. Uh, the Metropol the Metropolitans have two losses, and uh, Connecticut has one loss. So that's where we're standing What's right now. What's the Connecticut now. team name? Um, you know, Hartford, the whale. Is the <laughs> yeah. No, it, I, th I thought the they, Connecticut whale. I knew they were. It was something off of the whalers. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, cool. You know, um, Hartford, the whale. Yeah, you know, they only beat Vancouver <laughs> once, maybe twice in a lifetime. <laughs> it's really cool though to see that. And once again, it's on Twitch for free. I uh, think that's rad. All the games are available on Twitch for free. God damn it! I know. There's more and more reasons for me to have Twitch, and I fucking hate it. Uh, Barry Puck Threads <laughs> has actually got a Twitch channel, and I don't think I've ever touched it. Isn't uh, it free? It's free. Yeah. yeah, it's all free. Dang, yeah. you should do your my, Twitch and live stream your podcast hey, recording. there's an idea. Why don't my, we get somebody to handle that? Well, if you want oh, me Oh, wait, on. he moved to Las Vegas. Oh, yeah. F fucking. Fuck you, Shorzy. Kyle, Shorzy. you really tore up my man We here. talk a lot of shit about him when he's not here. <laughs> Screw you, Kyle. And then we just let him have an episode whenever he Yeah, goes, we like, do. What in. the fuck was that all about, man? That became the Kyle show. <laughs> I didn't listen to that one. Uh, she didn't. <laughs> um... But anyway, yeah, so uh, NWHL on Twitch. I, From what I read, and I might be completely off on this, but there's actually two Twitch channels. Uh, one to watch the games, and then one you can actually set up your own commentary about the games. Yeah. So, That's awesome. Yeah. So good for women's hockey. Once again, Dan Brown, uh, our, our buddy over on the west side, will be on next week with his take and update on women's hockey. So. Sweet. Spent two two games this weekend at the Toyota Center in Kennewick, Washington. It was a great weekend. The M's got two wins. Yeah. 4-3. Um, oh, it was great. Overtime, 4-3, Friday night against Victoria. Kyle Olson, the captain, takes a bullshit boarding call in overtime. 
So it becomes a four-on-three power play for Victoria. The Ams kill it, and then about 15 seconds out of the box, Olsen buries the game winner bar down. Yeah. It was pretty. Bar down. And then we got to see Talon Boyko for the first time this season on Saturday night against Prince George. He looked pretty good. He looks a lot better than he did last year. Still doesn't know his size. He's confident, though. He's moving a lot better. He's big. The team's back. They're all working hard. Um trying to think. Everett Silvertips pulled off a huge trade. Reese Vitelli has been traded to the Prince Albert Raiders in exchange for Cole Fonstad, who is a Montreal Canadian draft pick. So Everett got a got a big player there. Uh, Spokane is in last place in the U.S. <laughs> division. <laughs> by Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Seattle's in last place. <laughs> <laughs> Spokane is in fourth. <clears throat> and the Americans are tied for second with <laughs> Everett. And Portland... Is in the first place. Yeah, Portland's looking really good. Oh, year, well, actually. you know what? The, the, the young team that's not going to do anything. Is this 90, 1997 or Dude, what? I can't. <laughs> Portland and Tri Cities at the top? You know what? I, I <laughs> used to, I still find it hard to root for Portland, but I'm coming around to them. Yeah. But yeah. that fucking logo just bothers me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> the story is really cool. I mean, you know the story behind why they have that logo. Because when they got started, Chicago gave them all their equipment yeah. to get going. Yeah. And then when the when the Winterhawks kind of said, well, can we, can we keep it? Can we keep doing this? Chicago's like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. So, I'm so it's the exact same logo? Them. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And that's why they're the Winterhawks, not the Black Blackhawks. Black. <laughs> yeah. So, but they've been using it since day one. Yeah, that, I like that laugh. <laughs> I just cool. hate. I hate the Winterhawks because it, when I was in high school, we had some really good teams, and they were just world beaters. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like. Well, it's yeah. they were cheating. It, it was like the Utah Jazz. You know, yeah. during the Jordan era, they were where, re- where they, they don't <laughs> allow music. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but you know what I mean. Like you know, those teams that were really good, but they just there Could was always that dominant home. force. Yeah. Like just. Beating them down, so yeah. that's why I hate Portland. It's like every team that LeBron's played for. And there's a lot of hippies in Portland. And there is a lot of hippies Not a big in fan of those people either. I'm not a fan <laughs> of patchouli. We had that conversation. Although I won't discriminate against them. No. no. <laughs> They're humans too, but I just don't prefer to hang out with you yeah, hippies. They're smelly. They're kind just of flighty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not real reliable, those hippies. <laughs> um, yeah, <Yes>. I... I <laughs> I'm staying quiet. I got too many hippie associates. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's um, true. <laughs> I have many hippie associates. Yeah, you do. Uh, no, but uh, they, yeah, they know my stance. <laughs> well, the punk kid that hangs out with the hippies, they're like, ah, you don't look at the world the way we do it. I'm like, uh-uh. No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. Um, yeah, but the U.S. division is looking like a tough division again this year. Um, Ams are on the road Friday in Everett, and they'll be back home Saturday for Seattle. So we'll see how that goes. I'm going to wear my Seattle shirt. Are you? Oh, on yeah. On Saturday? Oh, yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, <laughs> he ignores that. I yes. love, yeah. I, I love that right you're just it. at this point, you're like, I'm here to watch a game and fuck with everybody. <laughs> yeah. Heck, yeah. I told him. I, I, read, I said, you need to get all these shirts made, and then I can every time the opposing team comes, I'm wearing their shirt. <laughs> oh, man. Like, That's Go dangerous. the team. I mean, not that I'd cheer from them, but no, I'm going to wear their, cl- their yeah. stuff. Keep everybody confused. Like, so What's going it's on? It's really they, funny because, uh, so I'm a big fan of uh, John Oliver, mm-hmm. and I recently have been catching up on some of his episodes. And there was an episode not too long ago where he was doing um, – a story about the president of Turkmenistan. Okay. Who is a horrible despot. Yes. Fucking yes. piece of shit. And uh, he's got this weird obsession with horses. Yes. And he was in a horse race and his horse stumbled and he fell off. And the government like seized all the footage of that <laughs> so that no one could ever see it. But so John Oliver showed it like 20 times in a row. Yeah. Right. (laughs) And then the guy's also obsessed with the Guinness Book of World Records. Okay. So he's constantly setting stupid fucking records, like the world's largest building shaped like the Star of David, (laughs) the the world's largest indoor Ferris wheel, like shit like that. Okay. And so John Oliver made the world's largest marble cake with a picture of that guy falling off the horse <laughs> on it. Oh my God. 600 square foot cake. And he was like, because Guinness wouldn't come 
because of how much money they get from that guy yeah. for going and doing his records. They didn't want to piss him off. Right. He's like, so I get to piss off this dude and the Guinness Book of World Records, and you all get free cake? <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> Hell it's yeah. It's a good day. I love it. Um, yeah, I saw a documentary about that place a while back. Some, I don't know if the guy was Canadian or not, but he was a reporter, and he got invited to this big some sort of Olympic thing going on in Turkmenistan or Tajmenistan or whatever. Turkmenistan. Yeah, that one. Yeah. One, of, one of the stands. But, man, it was crazy there. You know, Stan you Brafloff. Hear, you hear all the stories about North Korea and places like that, and then you see that, you're like, holy shit. Dude, man. the motherfuckers, the president's name is Gabagooli. Yep. That's weird. That's awesome. His name is Gabagooli Bunghamner. Something like that. It just makes <laughs> me think of Yo Gabba Gabba. Yeah. <laughs> Probably his favorite show. Yeah, Maybe. Dude. That's nope. a weird show. <laughs> Probably not going to have this uh, podcast being played in Turkmenistan or whatever it's at. So. <laughs> I don't know. Their their national team's not very good. Um, mm-hmm. Do they have a team? I don't know. I'm kind of... Uh, now I want to know. I know Kazakhstan does, but... Um, oh, yeah, dude. Documentary for the beautiful exaltation of the country of Kazakhstan. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. My sister, f- number four prostitute in <laughs> all of Kazakhstan. <laughs> NHL, big news, Colorado Avalanche are 5-0. and oh. Did you guys hear me? Did you hear me, Corey? Colorado Avalanche I was, is are 5-0. You... and oh. Okay, so yesterday we came up to record garage mm-hmm. and y'all motherfuckers started talking about football, and I just tuned out. Mm-hmm. So the exact same thing just happened. You yeah, said, okay. Colo, and I went... <laughs> yeah. Patty Wall's not there anymore, though. I so. know, and, and that helps. Yeah. Five and zero though. Uh, I know, dude. They've got a place in my heart because Jared Bednar, their coach, I believe, is from Humboldt. So, uh, I'm, I, you know what, my my hatred for them has been placed many other places. Yeah, at th- this point, that 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 rivalry is now the Sharks and the in the Golden Knights. Um, <laughs> the Golden Knights are good. Uh, da- God damn it, Dallas. Dallas is pissing me off, man, because uh, I, I I predicted them to be good, and I think they've won one game out of like <laughs> seven already. Uh, which, you know, it's still early in the season, but once you hit about that 10-game mark, if you don't have at least like five or six points in your pocket, you you got to start looking. So so Edmonton's 5-1, and one, yes, right? Yes, they are. They're on fire. Yep. Um, a Edmonton Oilers fan has, has done almost the equivalent of getting a Stanley Cup tattoo already. <laughs> he, he, <laughs> he has created a Facebook event for the 2020 Stanley Cup Championship Parade. <laughs> Because uh, you know, wow. why wouldn't you? Right? Well, they're five and one. They're basically going to win the cup at this point. It's a long season, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Division. Edmonton's in the Pacific Division, right? So, huh, dude? I Flyers play. First off, I night. like the balls. I, I do. I, I, I admire I, that. I admire it. But I also think, okay, every time an announcer says he hasn't missed a field goal all season. He's he shanks field goal. it right yep. every single time. So I almost feel out, like damn. if you love Someone your team, so almost got a shutout. Yeah, uh, right. Yeah, shutout. yeah. He's throwing yeah. a no hitter through seven. You don't fucking talk about it. Line no. drive okay, to I center ask. field. Why not? <laughs> Super it's, jinx. It jinxes it. Ha- hey. I don't believe that. Did you You're see? Wrong. Did you see what the LA Kings did? <laughs> have, you, have you guys heard of the Taylor Swift? I'm going to say it every time when it's like a minute or two and it's zero. I'm going to like shut out. Let's see what happens. Oh. Dude, okay. Every time. Okay, back to my story. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys hear about the Taylor Swift curse for, for the LA Kings? No. For the Penguins, yes. that is. Yes. So they haven't won a playoff series since Taylor Swift raised a banner in the Staples Center that said most sold out shows ever at the Staples Center. Oh, wow. So somebody caught on to that this offseason. They now hang a black drape over that banner oh, during all hell. Kings games. That is hilarious. That's yes. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Superstition's real, man. Dude, yeah. Yeah, you can't. The smell from the locker room early in the season is a lot different than the smell from the locker room late I, in the season. I got a guy who ain't watched his jock snap in 20 straight <laughs> games because he thinks flies are lucky. <laughs> yep. It's for real. So, I did follow that up, though, with I would only do that for Penguin games. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We appreciate that. Thank Somebody you. did yeah. it the other Fuck night. The Car- Carter had his Carter Hart had his first shutout in the Flyers home opener. Um, but in my brain, Devils. I said shut out. In my brain, I did too. But I never said it out loud. But within one of the announcers said it with like a minute left, and I'm like, "Ha! Oh, yeah. Fuck! There you go." Jack and he guesses. and they he ended up getting a shutout. So. Oh, actually, it was Brian Boucher that said, "We don't say shutout. We say goose egg." He's throwing. He's he's got a goose egg right now. 
The so you boosh. can use that term. I can use um, goose egg. And Boosh knows what's up. Mm, I know, but still. So you'll see, like, in... I still feel like that's... In Major League Baseball, if somebody's throwing a no-hitter, like, do seven... Like the pitcher will be at the end of the bench by himself. Yeah, the, nobody and will look the, at him. They won't even to talk to him. Yep. Everyone else will be at the other end of the dugout. Like, you don't want to mess with, you don't want to fuck with them. Well, in the that thing about that regards, I do understand. The though, thing about that, though, do, the, you don't want to mess with that zen <laughs> going yeah, exactly. on. But to me, that's not superstition. That's the guy's in the zone right now. You know, it's like goalie, you can't really do that because. Right, they don't knows. come off the ice. Right. Yeah. But you don't talk about it. So, <laughs> yeah, if, if the goalie comes off the ice, you're losing. Yeah. If yeah. the goalie. <laughs> True. Hey, Tuca. Hey, Tuca. I'm not talking to you. You're doing real good, and I don't want to pick it up. <laughs> good job Duke. on that goose egg, Duca. Duca, look at me. Look at me. I'm not looking at you. Tuca. <laughs> Tuca, I didn't say shut out. I didn't say shut out. I didn't do it. <laughs> There was a guy that sits close to the Zamboni entrance for the Americans. Uh, he's a season ticket holder, and man, he just fucks with goalies. <laughs> so, and he's right on that seam where the doors open, yeah. so there's nothing there. So he'll just be speaking through the glass all the time. He used to. There was an Austin Lotz that played forever at way back in the day before Hart came. Man, he was brutal on that guy. All hey, the Wolf time. had a shutout this last weekend. Yeah, he did one nothing barn yeah. burner there in Everett. I've yeah, been a boring game. How has the uh, how's the attendance been? I haven't been able to come out yet. Uh three to thirty five hundred. Opening night was fifty three hundred, and then we're we're talking th- what was it three thousand to thirty one hundred for those two games. Which in the middle of high school football season, not bad. Yeah, not bad. I, I would say sure. Yeah, Friday usually night kicks games. up somewhere around. Like Christmas break is usually when you know they start getting packed up in there. Yeah. And well, and then you always have that New Year's game, and that well, that yeah, just kind of just blows the lid off. Yeah. And then once the Seahawks are out of the playoffs, man, it really picks up again. So true story. <laughs> uh, no, I mean seriously, I, that I think that's funny, but it's it's true. Once once football season dies, um, or once the Seahawks die, which we always hope they don't make the playoffs, so the attendance will start even <laughs> earlier. But it's been good. Last year was up five percent, and I mean the in the in arena experience really is legitimately better this year. Cool, it's so much better. They, they brought the kiss cam this. Oh, this week, which and is we great. are so lucky because we great. don't section sit. PP <laughs> row eighteen. We have no direct sight line with any of the oh, cameras right. in the arena. What section? PP PP AKA sixty nine. <laughs> Hashtag 69 boys. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, is that so? PP, is that up right next to Craig's box? It's close. Kind so of. Craig yeah. sits above, I think, N. Right. Yeah. So then you've got, but there's no O. It goes N, right. P, gotcha. and then we're right there. But cool, I didn't so. know that. So the first night they did, I didn't know they were doing a kiss cam. So I'm sitting there like this. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, <laughs> with my the fingers. Oh, I was like, you get on me, you get to regret it. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. But I'm thinking Tuesday. Uh, wifey's out of town, so I think I might. Take the boys and we can stay up late. I think we're going to try to go Tuesday. I think they're playing Brandon next Tuesday. Yeah, next yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, a week from today. Yeah. yeah. We'll talk off air about that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, they are playing Brandon next Tuesday. Um. Which that's one of the three teams. No, that's not true. We figured out that's not true. There's only two teams that I haven't seen play at the Toyota Center, and one of them uh, is because they're a brand new team this year. The Winnipeg Ice who used to be the Kootenai Ice, right. but they're now in Winnipeg. And then the Edmonton Oil Kings, I've never seen them play. Because they always show up on Tuesday in November. Sure. When I can't make it. So. Well, you could have made it Tuesday. And they alternate, right? Like... It was yeah, Friday so night. That's a so bi- that's annual. every other year. Yep. They and same with Calgary. I think exactly. they're in Calgary this year. The East Conference and the cent- or the East Division and the Central Division are the two that they go back and forth right. because I mean the bus ride from here to Brandon is like twenty hours. Yeah, literally. Insane. And now it's even further because Winnipeg's further than Brandon. So you're talking, I think, twenty three hours. That's crazy. Sh- if they were to drive straight through, it would take them twenty three hours on the bus from here to Winnipeg. That's not. Fun. And Calgary's no. not a chip shot either. No. No, and they are, I believe they're in Calgary. Calgary, Yeah, it's Cal- they're in Calgary this year. Medicine Hat. I forget the other teams there in the in the central. That's so. a that's a team I've I've n- I've never seen Calgary and I've always wanted okay. to. Obviously the the Hitman. The, the Hitman is, you know, yeah. he was my favorite guy of all sure. time and uh, but I've never you never, never been seen able. Them? I've I've never seen them here. I, I've never been able to work it out. It's always something's going on. I like their jerseys. My favorite logo, though, in the <clears throat> whole WHL is the Red Deer Rebels. Yeah, I think that logo is. awesome. I was just looking. I'm, I think I'm an Everett man. Oh, the, the tips are great yeah. too. The, but I think the green green tips best. logo is my favorite. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I the think. E? No, 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 no. Not when they did their 10th anniversary. Okay. The I was like, script. Why that is that cool? No, the bear. Is is the Hitman? Um, 
they're like on a major anniversary this year. Is it thirty years? Uh, they are, and I don't remember. I I think it's like thirty years Might since be. Brett took over ownership, and they kind of yeah. did all that kind of. He's stuff. still involved, isn't he? Yeah, he's definitely involved. Yeah. He's he's very involved. I don't know if he owns the team or a piece of it anymore Part or anything, owner, but um, or something, yeah. But I know he's still very involved charity wise, and I mean that guy. Talk about somebody that keeps it in his hometown. Yeah, he runs so many different charities, and he always. I mean. He's still showing up at car dealerships for free, you know, like awesome. uh, bars, and he's they're always running charity events and stuff. So That's awesome. it's just cool that they kind of adopted that for the for the hockey team, and, yeah. and it's still going strong. Yeah, I love to see the NHL players and stuff that come back. And I know Brett obviously wasn't in NHL, but I'm thinking like Cam Loops, uh, Mark Recchi is a part owner in Cam Loops. You know, mm-hmm. here with the Americans, uh, Oli and Stu. Which did we mention that Stu? Uh, is now a scout for the NHL Seattle team. I don't think we mentioned that last no. week. Oh, you, you and I no, talked about I it, and that. then I didn't yep. show up last week. That's so. right. We talked yeah. about it off air. Uh, but <laughs> Stu tisk. said yeah. another. Well, and also Seattle just hired the first full-time female scout as well, uh, Granado. Kami Granado is that's, on the staff there. That's awesome. But the women are going to take hockey bus, don't uh, <laughs> Who was it? Medicine Hat has a How? Full, Isn't that the last name? They have a full-time uh, female coach on their staff now. Which is awesome. Listen, it's sad that sports have taken this long to realize that women are more organized. They're smarter. Yeah. Like, they are they deserve those high-level positions, and yep. they're very good at them. Yes, they are. Um, the corporate world, at least with a, when I was in the corporate world in the workforce five, six, seven, eight years ago, our company was one of the early adopters of really kind of figuring that out yeah, because mine too. it's like, you got to be kidding me. You yeah. know, um, in many capacities, these gals are outperforming, you know, guys on a grand scale. So yep. it's cool that it's finally infiltrating in the sports world yep. because they're deserving and um, they're, yep. they're doing a great job. It's they awesome. They are. And I love that a lot of that stigma is starting to, to fade away. Um, Stu was actually set another precedent. He was the very first, uh, scout from the Seattle team to be at games. He was actually scouting at Dallas. That's He's awesome. the pro scout, so he was <laughs> scouting at Dallas last weekend or week How and a half fun. ago. So it's it's happening, boys, and they're still holding firm to that to that January release date for the, the branding and everything. I was so. going to say, we got to be close to, like, what, 100 days on that now? Yeah, it'll be th- the last weekend in January is, is generally when the uh, All-Star game happens. I think it's the 28th this year, so um, we will be... Saving our nickels and dimes to buy. <laughs> I'll at least get a hat or something, man. Oh, so, yeah. We'll, we'll um, be buying some swag. There's yeah. no doubt about that. So, it, oh, and I if have. If they fuck it up, I won't be. I want to I wanna <laughs> take maybe not. Yeah, for right. fair point. <laughs> the Seattle Starbucks. I, I'm yeah. just not doing that for a hockey team. Um, <clears throat> not next week, but probably the week after. What was that? It was uh, it some Gregorian chant. Oh, I just <laughs> saw you. You were like looking around like. Did the did the water demon show up again? No, um, no. But in a couple of weeks, I want to take a look because a lot has been happening. The building is is completely gutted. There, it's just the roof being held up by these temporary pylons now at the key arena. It's been gutted. They've <coughs> dug down. Now they're starting the actual construction process. So it's coming. And we haven't talked a lot about it in the last several weeks. So I want to see where it's been pretty quiet. Even, but it hasn't. I mean, it, it has, but it hasn't. There's right. a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff. They're doing a lot of community events where sure. all the ownership's coming out and talking to people about uh, community involvement and talking about the different programs and stuff. Uh, and I think that stuff's important because it's just going to continue to blow up yeah. in the Northwest. Um, well, and it's only going to help support the WHL. It's going to help support sure. the yes. youth hockey. I yep. mean, a lot of people have been afraid, oh, it's going to take away from that. No. No way, man. No. It's going to just create more awareness and um, those things are going to grow because of this as well. So yep. You're going to get a lot of people that are going to go to like one Seattle game and then they're going to want to go to more, but they're going to see ticket prices and they're not going to want to pay that much for ticket prices. So they're going to start looking, well, what other hockey teams are out there? Mm-hmm. And they're going to say, oh, we've got a team in Seattle, in Kent. We've got a mm-hmm. team in Everett. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there's already like five new sheets of ice going in on the west side. That's awesome. Just in the last year but you're going to get a lot of people like that i think because let's not kid ourselves it's expensive to go to a hot yeah hockey hockey is not a cheap ticket no i still have never been 
I've never been to I've an been, NHL game either. I've been to two, and one of them I had to buy from a scalper. Uh, <laughs> and the other one was a part of a special... The uh, Flyers used to do a thing called a Santa pack. So for 100 bucks, you got like a signed puck and a stick and then two tickets to a random game in March oh, sort sweet. of thing. But we went and saw the Devils uh, when Marty Berdur was still playing. Oh, the Devils. Awesome. Peter Forsberg was on the Flyers. Oh, sh- and they won, which was great. But <laughs> but that was a good deal. So hundred bucks total, two tickets, all that sort of shit. Um, I think the cheapest ticket now is a hundred for nosebleed. <laughs> yeah. You can well, they have standing room only tickets oh, yeah. now for twenty five uh, at at the Flyers games, which a lot of teams are starting to do. Which, let me give a shout out to the Americans as well. They've opened up a party section uh, at their games now. Nice. So right next to the family friendly non alcohol <laughs> section, they opened up the bottom. They pushed all the bleachers in down there, set up tables. Who was the brainchild that put it next to the move the family section? Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Maybe they did. What's the family section? K? K, K, I think. And then it's the bottom of J. No, 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 no. It'd be the bottom of L then, because it's the one to the right of there that's now the the alcohol. (laughs) But I think a lot of it was logistics too, to be honest with you. You don't have a lot of choice. Yeah, but I don't know why you couldn't rename just put it on the other corner of the arena and say this is the family section. And maybe yeah. they did. I don't. I haven't paid attention don't to that. We so. don't sit in family well, section because yeah. we are not. But either way, I mean friendly. that's. A, I mean it's a great <laughs> idea. I mean finally, like yeah. Spokane's I, I, been doing it for years. Well, it's where the where the. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. The the. Um, what did I say? The party I, section. There was only one spot they could put that. Right. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Oh, okay. There's no reason you couldn't just. You know, relabel family section as on the other end of the yeah. arena. I think it, if I did the math right too, they they lose seventy seven seats. So in an arena that doesn't usually sell out, yeah, why not? It's not a big loss. And well, now you've got a package you can sell. To so what is it like there. a ten dollar ticket? Like it's a I'm standing sh- room only ticket? Or? I haven't seen the details on it. I know they've been pushing it a lot for groups to book it out down there, so yeah. like corporate events and yeah. stuff like that. And they've got their beer taps down there. That's cool. Food being served. No, that's awesome. I always thought um, in Pasco at the baseball stadium, like mm-hmm. I, I've always wanted them to like lower that right field fence, yeah, and just make a huge party section out there instead of the little barbecue area back to the side. Didn't that they tried to do that with that? Didn't they? As like your party section, like down the right field line. Yeah, there? it's a it's the barbecue pad or whatever, yeah. and they have corporate events and stuff there. But they always, I don't know. I just thought you know a big huge you know that fence doesn't have to be right. I don't know. There's many things they could do, but that's a great idea. I mean, yeah. you can see it in NFL stadiums now and Major League Baseball stadiums. They all have kind of that, you know, party pad. I've been watching, of course, because of, of Gardner Minshew, I've been watching a lot of Jacksonville Jaguars oh, games. Yeah. And in one of the end zones is just this, it looks like an, a giant aquarium. Oh, wow. But it's a swimming pool. Oh, neat. And, and people are buy tickets to this swimming pool area, but it's, it's all glass front. So you can like nice. see their legs and stuff under the water. I mean, it's just kind of cool. It's a cool aesthetic, but they're in there partying their asses off. That's really right. Uh, Didn't the Royals do that? Uh, the, put, I like, think hot the, tubs. Yeah. The Royals have and, something. Yeah. Um, I think the, um, one of the baseball teams, maybe the, the Rays or somebody also have some kind of swimming pool area, but it's great. Idea, anyways, man. it's, it's kind of catching on there and, and stadiums again, Attendance is down in every league, every sport. Oh yeah, um, and we, I don't know. I don't know if we talked about it here, but you know, when you have eighty-inch TVs now for a thousand bucks that are four K and yep. surround sound and stuff, like you can sit in your own house and have probably a better experience. You know, yep. um, yeah. so they're th- every league, every team is facing this right now, and they're trying to find different ways to yep. get people into the stadium. So I think it's cool, man. I'm glad. I'm glad the Americans, you know, yep. jumped on board and and pulled that off. I hope it's successful for him i have it it's funny because i always try to kind of peek over at it at the game i can't really see it the other night when we were there though i did notice a lot of people standing right along the glass that's with cool. their ears really on the cool. board you see that's everything. awesome because i had been before we took some corporate uh people there at at times mm-hmm. and you know er- eventually everybody ended upstairs and everybody's in the, the oh, club yeah. upstairs yeah. not yeah in the lounge and i think that's and part of what the reasoning for i this think it was, was. too yeah. give, give them the the lounge atmosphere yep where they can still watch the game. Right on right so. on the glass. I'm not a fan of sitting on the glass uh, just because I like to be up and see the whole game. But yeah. for like new fans or casual fans, sure. that's a great place to sit. Yeah, that, that's just atmosphere. Harder. That's not... Yeah. The people down there aren't there to watch the hockey game no. so much as the atmosphere of being there and being able to hang out in a, in right. a, a cool kind of venue. So you said for the casual fan, I would not want to sit down there. So You're I'm not, not a casual yeah. fan anymore. We covered that. You graduated. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> what? What? 
right. Not your casual fan. Not your average fan. No, no. I'm moving on it. up. <laughs> um, I want to. Me and Corey were singing that outside. Yeah. But not to the east side. Yeah. <laughs> I like the west side. West side. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. I wonder if this is actually updated. Either which way. Oh, yeah. Fish don't fry in the kitchen. Beans don't burn on the grill. Took a whole lot to ride in. Just to move up that hill. We're going to play a little uh, <laughs> little hockey puzzler game here real quick, Borgia. You down for that? Dang, I'm going to lose. Damn. Maybe. Yeah, no, maybe. Will. <laughs> maybe. Maybe you, I will. Maybe you will. <laughs> well, I wanted to do this a couple weeks ago, and... uh we didn't. So this is this little fun thing here. We'll wrap it up here soon. Question number one. Where's the Hockey Hall of Fame located? Toronto. Canton, Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. That's NFL. Sp- Springfield, Toronto. Illinois. Does everybody think Toronto? Yeah. No. Where do you think? Ottawa. Eh. <laughs> Toronto it is. Ding, ding, <laughs> ding, 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 ding. I got one point. Nailed it. Screw you guys. How many NHL teams are based in Canada? Six. Ooh, there's not many left. <laughs> Wait, what was the question? <laughs> I just heard Canada. I, I think you're not far <laughs> off. I, she's, she's not yeah, far I, I, off. Eight, I, w- I would say eight. Montreal. You're off a little bit. Seven? You got it. I would say go. I... seven teams, including the Winnipeg Jets, yep. that were added back in not too long <laughs> ago. Uh, in w- and I don't even know the answer to this one. Oh, cool. In what U.S. state was the Zamboni invented? Oh, it sounds... Kansas. It, it sounds Italian. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Minnesota. Florida. I think it was Vic- Vicente Zamboni invented it in New York. 1927 in Hoboken, New Jersey. Oh. California. There you go. California. Whoa, oh, wow. I'm just throwing out states. <laughs> I would never have thought I that never would have been. the no. state of California would have brought us the Zamboni. Um, Good on you, California. What uni- just Think about this, guys. This one's actually pretty easy. What uniform number will never be used again by any team? 69. No, that one's you. Shorzy, Shorzy <laughs> I know. Wears it. I just love that number. 99? Fucking Shorzy. 99. Yeah. Because why? The great one. The great one. Gretzky. Really? Yep. Yeah. It's it's honor. Like any real. other team? Yep. No, no team Nobody can, can wear have the that number, number 99. That's yeah. weird. That's. That's, it's, I don't know, like putting him I, up on a pedestal, thinking like you're God. He is God in hockey. <laughs> right. But, the, but then you get, it's to avoid shit like LeBron wearing 23. <laughs> yeah. Like. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you're not Jordan, bro. I wish the NBA would yeah. have gotten rid of 23. Yeah, the to NBA be hasn't eliminated number 23, though. They no, but should that's, have. That's, they should have. I don't think so. They, I do. I totally do. I, I think, I, I think that takes uh, some incredible honor, and the only one I could see that's legitimate is 42 in Major League Baseball, Jackie Robinson. Yeah. I mean, okay. the reasoning behind that's the only number. I'll give you that. In Major League Baseball that's. Un- unattainable by anyone, and well, the- and ninety nine is the only one in hockey. Yeah, but nobody. He was ever just a good fucking hockey player. Like he didn't. He's not special. Oh my god! We'll save that one for another well, day. Th- this Here, isn't coming on. out right. You, you understand what I'm saying? Like he didn't do Jackie Robinson esque type no, things to no. succeed in the NHL. Like no, but he he didn't break barriers. He wasn't the first blonde haired, blue eyed yes, uh, hockey that. player to I, score. I know what you're saying, but he did more for bringing the outside world to hockey yep. and bringing hockey to the outside world than anybody who had come before him. Did he? Yes. Yeah. Or was it because he was good and other people made a big deal of it? Yeah. And it's cause <laughs> and it worked. Yeah, but he went to the LA Kings. He was just doing his job. When though. he went to LA though, that's when everything changed. Look, for I'm not anti Wayne Gretzky. No, I'm try- I'm it's trying to I'm just trying to like level this out. Like same with Jordan. Yeah, you so you could make the argument for Jordan, but I personally wouldn't think that number okay, twenty three okay. should be Okay, I want you to say the name Sidney Crosby to a non sports fan. I want you to say the name fucking Patrick Kane to a non-sports fan. Sure. They're not going to know who the fuck you're talking about. Okay. If you go up to anybody and say Wayne Gretzky, they right. know he's a fucking hockey player. That's fine. And he's in the Hall of Fame, and he should be, and there's a Hall of Fame for that kind of thing. But you can't just start fucking randomly retiring numbers for it's legendary the players. Last That's the only one, anyway. though. That's the only one. Okay, so so then you're telling me that Gordy Howe's what, numbers got, shouldn't... like. Opinion? Should I have a fun fact. 
<laughs> Wait, hold on. I want to hear Gordy Howe what? Number I'm just saying, like, could we <laughs> not agree that Gordy Howe was more eight. important to hockey than Wayne Gretzky? I, I don't think ag- he was. I don't agree that Gordy Howe is more important to hockey than Wayne Gretzky. Yeah. And here's why. Here's why. Okay. Gordy Howe was definitely the most important player during that era, for sure, which covered, what, five decades or whatever yeah, of the yeah. time he played. But Wayne Gretzky came in and smashed that era. Yep. But it, it was a it was a different era, like it, yes. hockey was played way differently during Gretzky's era. Well, even though they crossed over a little bit, but okay, again, I I don't disagree with you. I am a Gordie Howe fan. Yeah, but if you say Gordie Howe, there are going to be people who don't know who that is in the hockey world. Everybody knows who Gordie yeah. Howe is. In the sports world, they don't. But people who don't follow hockey still know who Wayne Gretzky is. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll agree to disagree. I disagree. We got two more. We got two more. Quite. Wait. This what's the fun fact that you were going to share? This is good. I can tell you later. Okay. When was the no? NH- that's dumb. When okay. was the NHL created? <laughs> 1969. No. 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 Good guess. <laughs> Damn woman. <laughs> That, that's when we she, landed on the moon. Yeah, <laughs> that's when we landed somewhere. Um, <laughs> She's got it, man. When was it? Yeah, nineteen nineteen. You're close. close. You're really fucking close. I'm Tw- trying to remember all those old school documentaries. Nineteen seventeen. Damn. Okay. What did they, we just celebrate two years ago? The centennial. The oh yeah. <laughs> yep. The year that Seattle. That's when won I was at Casual. Well, so <laughs> Seattle won the cup in the spring 16? of 1917, yep. yeah. and then the, and the NHL, NHL was created formed. in the fall yep. of 1917. How cool is so that? That is Bastards. awesome. That's really rad. Um, hey, we released Will Kush Kush Nierick. Yeah. Oh. Did they? Yeah. Is it posted? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, how many NHL teams were added after Wayne Gretzky went to the Los Angeles Kings? Okay, repeat that and don't answer. How <laughs> many? NHL teams were <laughs> added after Wayne Gretzky went to the Los Angeles Kings. Seven. Close. Oh, I'm so close all the time. Let's see. There's Phoenix. Carolina. Colorado. Tampa Bay. So are these, exp- are you saying expansion or teams that, it's got to be expansion. Yeah, it's yeah. Be. yeah, added, added. Not relocated, added. Okay. That makes it harder. Because there's been a lot of moving around in the last actually ten years. I'm trying to years. think because they don't have it listed. I'm trying to think of the number. Are we going all the way up to Vegas? Yes, the book doesn't, but yes, we are. So the book is one off. So eight. Close nine. <laughs> Close thirteen. It's not nine. Getting cold. Sixty nine. <laughs> ten. Shit. Dude, you got something on the brain, lady. <laughs> <laughs> She's been a horn dog since she got here. <laughs> Yeah, that's me, boys. Uh, ten. There's been ten teams added. Wow. Yeah, and I'd like. To and how many years? Since Gret- Gretzky was what 88, 88. 89, 88. So in thirty years, ten new teams. So is that a lot? Yes. Thinking that way. Yeah. Yeah. Considering a team that was six for like fifty years. So, question: Has any NHL team closed? Like closed down. I know that sounds weird to ask, but uh, no, lots of relocated. The yeah. Atlanta but Thrashers not... became the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, Quebec Nordiques. But it's, it's became... always grown. It hasn't like okay, we can't be. Yeah, a team it hasn't anymore. retracted. No. Uh, wait, wait. What? What did the Seattle Metropolitans become? They were not a part of the NHL. Oh, they weren't. Okay, no, that's they right. were a hockey club. That's when it was clubs playing for okay, the yeah. Stanley Cup. Okay, makes sense. So, um, man, we're about out of time here. Okay, my fun fact. Yes. My fun fact of today. Boys, I'm listening. Okay, no. Um, There's 69 players. On the team. <laughs> Is it something like that? There what, were 69. Why do you players? keep saying 69? I don't understand. Just following your lead, baby. Yeah, whatever. Um, goalies not being goalies, or wait, oh. being captains. Can yeah. I say that? Can, oh. I, can you do a retake on that? Because nope, that's just that's stupid. The, that's the beauty. God, of, without here's a net, why live. goalies <laughs> are not that's bullshit. Here's why goalies are not named captains. Don't tell them my secret. Mm-hmm. I found this. I was so proud. She did. It's been bothering me because she said asked about me, and I, 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 had, I'd heard that before, but I was like, I don't think it's actually a rule. She proved me wrong. Yes, it actually is a rule. I can't actually find the actual like in date or the little code thingy for it. I didn't really look for the it. The RCW. If yeah, you I didn't will. really look yeah. for it to be honest with you. <laughs> exactly. But anyways, um it is a rule. A goalie cannot be officially in a captain because back in 1948-49 season, NHL changed the rule because goaltenders Bill Dernan from the 
Montreal Canadiens wore a C. He was the captain for that season, and he would stop every time that a um, referee or a linesman would call something. So you know, offsides or roughing or whatever the penalty was, go he out, would go argue. out and argue it for and minutes. stop get a, get himself a break. Yes. So they were Brilliant. like, yeah. yeah. So they had to. St- <laughs> they're like, okay. So goalies were now banned for becoming captains in yes. the NHL. Uh, I believe that's why, because the whole conversation came up with Warren being part of the leadership group, but he's right. not able to wear an A or a C or you know or be the captain or whatever. <laughs> yeah, right. um, and I was like, well, why not? That's stupid. Why would you be part of the leadership group if you can't wear the freaking? Well, part a? of the reason is because he's a twenty-year-old and yeah, all I that think stuff, I think that's but. awesome, but that's why. And I'm assuming it trickles down to the WHL and stuff like that. But I thought yeah. that was awesome. Yeah. I think I would probably do the same thing. So there is your fun fact for the yeah, week. You know, now that's you've set a info. precedent. You're I did to not come know up that. With a fun yeah. fact every week. I was so proud of this. I like it. <laughs> Good Next. work, but now you've created a segment. Yep. <laughs> okay, fine. Next week, you need to find a fun fact about the Vancouver millionaires. Ooh. No, I will find the fun fact that I want. I do what I want. I do what I want. Bitch. And on that note, I want to bring this show to a close. Do you want to find out real quick why I'm wearing a Chicago Blackhawks? Oh yes. yes. Sorry, man. Dude. I've been waiting the whole fucking episode. So, so I'm wearing a Chicago Blackhawks today hat today, uh, which is my son, my son Jackson's hat, uh, because the original Chicago Blackhawk announced the original Chicago Blackhawk, Clark W. Griswold, yeah. hmm. announced that on Black Friday this year, November 29th. Mm-hmm. He will be at the Fox Theater in Spokane screening Christmas Vacation. What? And then what? doing a Q&A afterwards. Fine. <laughs> and I really feel like I need to be there. What? I told you it wasn't hockey related, but I tore I, I tied but it, it into hockey. Kind of yeah. is. I tied it into hockey yeah. because he's the original Blackhawk. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's legit. Wow. Oh my god. That would be much better than my Black Friday <laughs> last year. My Black Friday last year sucked ass. <laughs> Literally, they sucked shit out of my ass. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and on that note. And on that note. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> you were there. No, I was not in there. That's true. You weren't in the operating room. <laughs> Cascadia Hockey is recorded in the Adventures Underground Podcast Network Studios, 1391 George Washington Way, Richland, Washington. Come in and check out some books, comics, all kinds of stuff. And uh, get get a cup of coffee at the yes. Caterpillar Cafe. Yes. Uh, actually, you can pick up Beat Dolan Records. Yes. In the record store. And Sage. Or and Sage Francis. Week, so. yeah. yeah. Other strange, famous records available in the record store. Uh, anything you want to pimp for Barry Puck before we get out of here? Keep an eye out. We talked about it yesterday on Garageorama, but we've got a cool little collab coming up with a, uh, a local guy here. And um, new designs are coming soon. And on the email list, there is going to be a special announcement about the Soul on Ice stuff. You're going to want to keep an eye out for that. So just put a little money back in your pocket is what I will say. Okay. So, Solid. Yeah. Yeah. I actually had a record label called Solid once. I got I got some ideas for um, an offshoot line okay. through Buried Puck. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, for Buried Puck Threads, you have been Aaron Piper. I have been, and I will continue to be. Also, social media maven. <laughs> and deep into this cut, Anya Piper. <laughs> it's the only line I know. <laughs> <laughs> Derek, are you hey. ready to regular guy on out of here? I'm ready. Uh, go to the go to the uptown yes. on the 19th, Saturday the 19th. Go to the uptown and see Old Friendly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, That's absolutely. And the Echo Larks and Kerry Ockery. Yep. yep. Pack that house. Uh, Tickets are $20 at the door. We will see you there. This has been Cascadia Hockey. Well, you didn't time us down. No, you can't say that anymore. I'm a girl. I'm not a boy. We can still say Ferda. But that's for the boys. It's it's for the fans.